Majigo has a loving family of four which included his wife and two children, Ekizi and Kanal. His wife, Ataya, supports him by helping with the work in the farm. She tends to the young food crops like the yams, cassavas, plantains and tomatoes. She made sure she weeds around them regularly to prevent them from being suffocated while still young. His husband does the heavier chores like digging the holes for planting both the yams and cassavas. The children would do the little they could whenever they came back from school and fetch water from the stream when the house needed some. These were the traditional roles of the family members. This was about the same in every household in Oza's village. Majigo was a man known for his profound thoughts. He would often drift away for minutes on end and go into his series of trance. What he heard or saw sometimes, he would refuse to share with his family for the fear that either they would not understand the meaning or think that he had gone mad. The latter could be serious and tarnishing to his image. He did not want to scare his family. He told himself several times that he would let them know at the right time. He once fell into a trance where the heavens above was totally blood red and the sun was green in the middle of the day. Heard voices he couldn't explain or understand the meaning of. In his mind, he knew it could only mean just one thing which was an impending bad omen. Even with all these experiences, he was a tranquil man on the outside. He always seemed to have no worries at all. That gave his family, especially his wife the strength she needed to keep going, on a daily basis. They weren't rich at all. In fact, they were below average using the village standard measurement of wealth. They had a farmland that barely was sufficient to feed the family and a few goats and hens in their yard. He worked hard and went to the farm even on days designated as spiritual days at Osis. He had to, because he needed to feed his family. On one such day, he took his hoe and cutlass and headed for the farm at the early hours of the morning before sunrise. He promised himself that he would be back home before the other villagers began to wake up. He hurried along the rough, winding footpath, chewing aggressively on the chewing stick his wife had handed him. As he walked briskly, he tripped on a stone and fell to the ground. Immediately, he felt a drowsiness that confused his state of consciousness. He couldn't ascertain if he was unconscious or awake. The voice came to his ears with an unusual clarity to it. It has never been this clear. It said, you would have to go on the journey I would send you. The faith of the land is in your hands, it said. 